Now for this last part, we're told that the mass that was placed at B is now moved to the point in the middle. Okay, so what we need to do is just put that force in in the middle there. That mass at B was 5 over 2m, so it's now going to be 5 over 2mg for the weight acting in the middle. And we've got to find out what the magnitude of the normal reaction is on D, on this support D. Now because we've moved this from the end here to the middle, what's going to happen is the beam here, the rod I should say, is not going to tilt anymore about C. So there's going to be a contact force at C, which won't be zero. So we'll just put that as RC Newtons. There'll also be one at D, RD Newtons. Okay, this will have changed now compared to what it was in the first part. So we've got to find out then what this reaction is at D. And to do a problem like this, I don't want to include the RC into my equation. So this has given me a clue now that I need to take moments about the point C. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take moments about the point C in order to get RD. And we need to set up a positive sense. And again, as always in moments questions, it doesn't matter which way you do, but as long as you stick to it throughout the question. I'm going to take anti-clockwise as positive. So let's have a look at taking these moments then about C. Again, I would normally think about using a ruler if I was stuck about which way the forces made the rod turn. This time I would put my finger at this point here, imagining this was the point C. And if we start with the force RD, okay, I've just got to push in this direction to simulate this force. And what will happen is the rod would want to turn that way about C. And that way is in the positive sense. That is why I actually took this way as being the positive sense. I wanted to have RD as a positive value. Okay, but again, it doesn't matter. It's up to you which way you decide to take the positive sense. So when it comes to this moment for RD, it's going to be the force RD multiplied by the distance from D to C. Now, we know that we're coming in D here. We've got D in from this end. So that leaves us with 3D. 2D here, taken away from the 5D, leaves us with the distance of 3D. Okay, so that would be RD times 3D. Now let's move on to this force here, the 5 over 2 mg. If we were to simulate that, we would push down on the ruler in that direction. And that would want to turn the rod in that sense about the point C, negative sense. So we've got to have minus the force 5 over 2 mg multiplied by the distance from here to C. And what's that distance going to be? Well, we have already found out that, well, we know that this is actually in the middle of the rod. So that's going to be 2.5D to the middle there. Take away this D here, so it's going to be 1.5D from there to there. 1.5D, I'm going to write as a top heavy fraction, that's 3 over 2D, okay? 1.5D. Next, let's have a look at the weight of the rod, mg. Again, we can simulate that by pushing down on the ruler here, and again, that's going to want to turn it in that sense, in the negative sense about C. So it's going to be minus the force, mg, multiplied by the distance from g to c. Now, 
we've just seen that this distance has to be one and a half d. We also found out in the previous part that g to d was 5 upon 2d. So let's just mark that in as 5 upon 2d. Okay, the distance from g to d. So that means that if that's the case, we, we could just add these values up. We've got d, d, that's 2d, plus another 2.5d, that's 4.5d. So this gap here must be half d. So it's going to be mg, the force, times that distance of a half d. So let's just put that in as a half d. So that's the moments of all the forces because we don't have any moment coming from RC. If we were to push through C, this ruler wouldn't turn if we had our finger on C. So this is the total moment about C. And because the rod is in equilibrium, it's going to equal zero. No total moment. So there's our equation. All you've got to do now is just rearrange it for RD. So you might like to pause the video if you want and just have a go and come back and uh, see how you got on. See if you get the same answer as I do. OK, well, welcome back if you did have a go. What would I do next? Well, I think I would notice that D is in every term. I can divide throughout by D. So we could take that out. D, D, D. And we could divide that one. It's because 0 That's just going to stay a 0. OK, so that's that. What else could we do? Let's just say that we've got 3RD here. 3RD. And we've got minus 15 over 4 mg. OK, and then minus a half mg, mg over 2. And that equals 0. So you've got 15 quarters here. This is a half, the same as two quarters. So minus 15 quarters minus another two quarters is going to be minus 17 quarters mg. And if I add that to both sides, I get 3rd equals 17 quarters mg. And now I just need to divide by 3 or times this by a third. And I get rd equals 17 over 12 mg. OK, 17 over 12 mg newtons would be our contact force then at D. OK, 